Hey, what's up everybody? Hammerheart Metal Reviews here once again. Today we are doing another edition in my series where I'm counting down my favorite bands from a specific country. And today we are going to be talking about Greece and my favorite Greek bands. So of course Greece is really known for their black metal scene, have a really unique take on black metal. A lot of the bands kind of have members that are in a bunch of like other bands from the country kind of joining different projects but also Greece is not just known for black metal there's also really a great like traditional heavy metal power metal scene and as you'll see from this list I've got a good mix here a lot of black metal but also yeah some death metal some power metal some traditional heavy metal a little bit of everything here I have limited this to a top 25, so I'm sure with just limiting it to 25, there's going to be a lot of bands I'm not naming. So if you don't see something here, it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't like it. It's possible I haven't heard of them. That's always my favorite part about doing these lists is getting your recommendations down below. Definitely let me know which bands I've missed out or which bands I should go check out. So always like diving in and getting new music to listen to. So hopefully this list will give you some new bands to check out. And like I said, definitely give me your picks as well. Give me some new bands to go check out. So anyways, before I get into this, I will list all 25 of these band names down below as I'm sure to mispronounce some of them. And uh, yeah, as usual with these, don't put too much stock in the order. Like this is 25. Once I get to like my top 15, those ones I probably like a little bit more than these first 10 that I'm going to talk about. But nonetheless, like the order of something that's in 10th compared to something that's in 6th, not much of a difference there. It's just a random, not random order. I just try to rank them, but yeah, it's always tough here, especially when you're mixing genres. But anyways, I am rambling on too much. Let's get into this. Okay, so just cracking the list in at 25, I'm going with Aeneon. Might be mispronouncing that. This is some progressive, experimental black metal. Really unique stuff. Bring in like saxophones and just really off the beaten path type of black metal. They did have a new album out this year. Well, 2022 uh, Manemo Sign. Might be mispronouncing that as well. But all in all, if you like your black metal weird and unique, definitely go give these guys a listen. Up next at number 24, I'm going with Night Rage. This is some melodic death metal. Their first two albums I really enjoyed. They actually brought in Thomas Lindbergh from At The Gates to do lead vocals for them. And the band also featured Gus G on guitars for a time. Those first two albums are pretty solid. After that, Thomas Lindbergh leaves. Gus G leaves. The output since then has kind of wavered in quality. I can't really say that I'm a fan of all of their stuff. But those first couple albums are pretty great. If you're into melodic death metal, go check them out. Really shredding guitar in there. Also, and a unique spin on it, go give them a listen. Up next at number 23, I'm going with Nergal. So no, not the singer of Behemoth, but yeah, spelt the same way. This is some like straight ahead black metal. Got that Greek feel to it. Um, yeah, just a solid black metal band that's definitely worth checking out if you're into black metal at all. Up next, speaking of Gus G, let's go with Firewind. This is some um, power slash heavy metal. This is another band I have actually haven't listened to every single Firewind album. Some stuff that I've listened to I did enjoy. Some stuff doesn't quite satisfy me in the same way. But nonetheless, they're making this list basically on the sole basis of Gus G's guitar playing. He is a guitar wizard. I mean, a lot of his playing here is really next level stuff. Um, I don't hardly even considered a Greek band these days, more of an international project, but nonetheless, I think they're still considered a Greek band because of Gus G. So nonetheless, yeah, if you're into power heavy metal, definitely go check them out. Some great guitar work on display. Up next at number 21, I'm going with Valador. This is probably more of an underrated one, maybe a lesser known kind of a mix of power metal with traditional heavy metal. Very Manowar-esque. Obviously, Manowar is a huge influence on this band. This is a one-man band. I think he brings in some other members to fill out the lineup, but really, it's one man driving it. The only thing that holds this back from being as good as it could be is the vocals aren't necessarily the best. It's very unique. It's, uh, it's a lot of effort going into it to really you feel the pride in his voice and the music that he's writing. And I do really enjoy it, but I think with a better vocalist, this would be elevated even higher. But nonetheless, I don't want to sound like I'm hating on it. I actually really like this stuff. Uh, go check out Valador if you have not. Up next at number 20, going with George Colias. 
So of course, longtime drummer of Nile. But uh, here, I'm not talking about Nile. That's an American band that features George Glass. Here, he has put out one solo album as well as a solo artist. Pretty much straight ahead death metal. He actually plays guitar as well. The guitar on the album is not really anything to write home about. It's pretty straight ahead death metal, but the drumming is amazing. And uh, yeah, all in all, pretty solid death metal album. Who knows if he'll release more stuff in the future. But yeah, of course, George Glass is going to be in here. One of the most well-known drummers in the world. Never mind, just from Greece. Up next at number 19, let's go back with some more power metal with Paladine. This is a more recent power metal band. They just have two albums, but it's really well executed. Maybe not reinventing the wheel here in any way, but if you just want to hear a couple solid power metal albums, go check these guys out. Up next at number 18, I'm going with Thou Art Lord. So this, of course, is kind of a super group. Features members of Necromantia, Rotting Christ kind of brings in some similar stylings from those bands, but goes in more of a thrash direction, some death metal influence, still got that root in black metal, but kind of a hybrid mixing these genres together. Pretty well executed stuff here, very enjoyable for what it is. Uh, yeah, go check them out if you have not. Up next at number 17, let's switch gears completely with Achilus or Achilus. I'm not sure on the pronunciation. This is some epic heavy metal. They only have two full lengths. Um, actually had an album from 2022, The Ice Wind Chronicles, which is very catchy, just solid guitar work, really epic stuff. If you like your heavy metal more on the epic side of things, definitely go check these guys out. I think this is another very underrated one, maybe a lesser known band. So go give them some love, check out their album, and uh, yeah, let's move this right along. Up next at number 16, I'm going with Abyssus. So this is some old school death metal, very much influenced by death, obituary, especially in the vocals. You can kind of hear some John Tardy isms going on with the vocals. They only have a couple albums. Also had an album from 2022, Death Revival, which was very solid. Like I said, almost pure old school obituary worship. But I like my old school death metal and this checks all those boxes. Go give Abyssus a listen if you have not. All right, now into the top 15. In at 15th, I'm going with Septic Flesh. This is some symphonic death metal, really one of the biggest names out there in symphonic death metal. Don't really need to go into too much of a backstory here. I'm sure everyone is at least passingly familiar with Septic Flesh. Uh, been around a long time, but yeah, for me, yeah, I'm putting them at 15th. They could be higher. I'm sure a lot of people would have them a lot higher. Symphonic death metal isn't always the go-to genre for me, so that's probably the reason I have this a little bit lower compared to some other stuff. But nonetheless, they are very accomplished in this genre of metal. And yeah, had to be on this list. Up next at number 14, going with Yoth Iria. Iria, Iria, I'm not sure on the pronunciation. Again, this is some like melodic black metal, very catchy stuff. This is kind of another super group features members of Barathron, Rotting Christ, Necromantia. Um, just had an album from 2021, As the Flame Withers. That was their debut full length. They do also have an EP. But this is very catchy. Brings in like hints of classic heavy metal in with the black metal riffing. And just a really well executed album. I really un enjoyed their debut. Looking forward to whatever they do next. But yeah, this one could rise even higher than number 14. I'm just putting it here now because they only have the one album. But nonetheless, awesome, awesome stuff here. And let's move this right along. Up next at number 13, some more power metal with War Drum. So this band is probably most well known for featuring Yanis Papadopoulos on vocals, at least previously. He's not in the band anymore. He, of course, is more well known now for being the vocalist from Beast in Black. Uh, he did one album with Warrior Path as well. So those early War Drum albums that featured him on vocals. Obviously, the vocals are next level. He's a great power metal singer. And yeah, all in all, just really solid power metal with great vocals. Go give them a listen. Up next at number 12, I'm going with Lunar Spells. So this is another probably lesser known, more recent black metal band. Very raw black metal, but with a healthy dose of keyboards in there as well. Had an album from 2022 titled Demise of Heaven, which was really solid. Very unique take on the genre. I really love how they infuse the keyboards into the raw black metal and just gives it this overall awesome atmosphere. Really great stuff in at number 12. All right, from here on out, 11 down to 1. This is where it got really tough. I pretty much love all of these next bands. The order here, 
really difficult, but give it a shot. So even what I'm putting in 11th could swap with something that's in 7th and vice versa on any given day. So don't put too much stock in this. But these next 11 are the bands that when I was coming up with this list, I just jotted them down like instantly without any thought. These ones are making the list. The other ones I kind of had to pick and choose between a few that I left off. But yeah, these ones, the best of the best. My favorite 11 Greek bands. Let's go. In at number 11, I'm going with Agatus. So this is some black metal with hints of like classic heavy metal. It's got that typical Greek sound. They only have three full lengths, but they have been around a long time. Kind of a more underrated one as well. But really great stuff here. Definitely deserve more recognition. Maybe they don't get mentioned in the same breath as the big names in Greek black metal, but they should. It's really awesome stuff. Up next at number 10, a uh, side project, or, well, not necessarily a side project, but one of the guys from Agatus, his one-man band, Zemiel. This is just awesome stuff as well. Like I said, features the one guy from Agatus. Him and his brother are in Agatus, and this is just his one-man band. I, I feel like he bring might bring in a couple guest musicians here and there. But yeah, really awesome stuff here as well. If you're into Greek black metal, definitely go check out Agatus and Zemiel, or Zemiel, once again, I don't know how to pr actually pronounce all these bands, but uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Up next at number nine, switch gears completely to some death metal with Dead Congregation. So this is some old school death metal, very influenced by bands like Immolation, Incantation, the very low gutturals, very doomy death metal, but just grimy, slimy, heavy cavernous stuff. Really awesome. They only have two full lengths, but yeah, if you like your death metal in the old immolation style, definitely go check out Dead Congregation. Up next at number eight, I'm going with Katavashia. This is some melodic black metal, probably pretty similar to a band like Varathron. Um, features some of the same members and even some of the same members from Aeneon, who I had mentioned earlier. So it's kind of almost like, I don't want to say it's just a tribute band, but it's really well executed stuff here. They just have a couple albums as well, but definitely worth checking out. Just solid, catchy black metal. Up next at number seven, I'm going with Black Soul Horde. This is some heavy metal mixed with power metal. Huge Manila Road influence here. I feel like this is another band that's super underrated. Their album from 2021, Horrors from the Void, was super kick-ass. Just awesome riffs. The vocals probably take some getting used to, much like Vanilla Road. Manila Road. <laughs> Vanilla Road, wow. Um, but yeah, awesome stuff if you're into this style of like traditional heavy metal. Definitely go check these guys out. Super interesting and engaging music. All right, up next at number six, a band that I've kind of name-dropped a couple times already, Varathron. So this is just black metal legends from Greek. This typifies the Hellenic black metal sound. This could be higher than six. Like, these next bands, it's so hard to rank. But, like, yeah, they've had a long career, super solid stuff. You can't really talk about Greek metal without mentioning these guys. And, yeah, just missed out on my top five, but any given day, they'd be right in there. Now into the top five. Coming in fifth place, I'm going with one of my favorite current power metal bands from Greece, Warrior Path. This is a very new power metal band. Technically, it's like a one dude that's driving the band, writing all the songs. The debut album actually featured Yanis Papadopoulos on vocals, who I mentioned earlier, and then he left. The second album, they brought in Daniel Hyman from Lost Horizon fame. So, I mean... Is there any band out there that's had, like, two more high-profile singers on two different albums? Like, that's crazy. Like, you take the awesome vocals from the debut, he leaves, you get worried. Well, they bring in Daniel fucking Hyman, and the vocals are possibly even better on the second album. I love both of these albums. Really solid power metal, catchy stuff with amazing vocals. If that sounds like it's your cup of tea and you haven't listened to these guys, go check out both of their albums. Just really great power metal. Up next at number four. Rotting Christ. Of course, Rotting Christ is going to be high on this list. Pretty much the biggest name in Greek black metal. Kind of their own style with this melody and even in different stages of their career almost went like a gothic direction. They've had a long and varied career. I wouldn't say I love every single album by them, but I really like their early works and there's some other stuff along the way that I do enjoy as well. I'm not putting them at the top of this list because there's a couple bands I personally prefer more, but nonetheless, 
Ronnie Kreith deserves a high spot on this list. One of the most important names in Greek black metal, for sure. Up next at number three, going with Necromantia. So, of course, kind of everything I just said about Rod and Christ, you apply here as well. One of the biggest names in the Greek black metal scene. Crossing the Fiery Path is like an absolute Greek black metal classic. That's their debut record. These guys have been around a long time as well. Had a very solid career. I absolutely love their style of black metal. It's so unique and just awesome, awesome stuff. All right, so that leaves two more to go. In at number two, maybe more of an underrated one with Macabre Omen. This is some epic pagan black metal, really combining like, yeah, the pagan Greek stylings typical of the Hellenic scene, but then also bringing in shades of a band like Bathory with their more epic era, like Hammerheart era, and combining it all together to make something uniquely their own. They only have a couple full lengths. They have been around a long time, but didn't actually release a full length until later in their career. But yeah, if you like your black metal epic, Definitely go check out Macabre Omen. Super underrated band that more people should be talking about. And that just leaves one, my favorite Greek band. This was actually a really easy choice for me, although I'm sure this would not be the top choice on a lot of other people's lists because I feel like these guys are super underrated as well. And that is Caviar. I might be mispronouncing that. Caviar, Caviar. I'm not even sure. They're my favorite Greek band and I don't actually know the pronunciation, but this is Pagan Black Metal at its finest just you listen to it you close your eyes and you feel like you're in ancient greece they just bring in like some flutes and different folky instrumentation but they don't overdo it they just bring it in in moments and just mix it in with their old school black metal and it just creates this awesome stuff in their later days they've gone a little more epic kind of bringing in shades of bathory in moments as well but yeah, I absolutely love their whole discography. I'm going to be doing a discography ranking for them very soon. Probably uh, early 2023, I will have that done. But yeah, you can look forward to that. And if you have not checked these guys out before, I strongly suggest you go do it. Super underrated band. They don't get the recognition of bands like Rotting Christ or Verathon or Necromantia. But they fucking should. Because these guys, in my opinion, are Greeks, Greece's finest. So anyways, these are just my thoughts and opinions as usual. Love to get your choices down below. Let me know what you thought of these 25, but also, yeah, give me some recommendations because that's my favorite part about this. So anyways, until next time, Hammerheart Metal Reviews, out.